Privyet, privyet, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Oh, I do. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house. But there's something truly special about making that trip as a child, picking a movie out by hand, and having your country invaded before you have a chance to watch it. Oh, mm -hmm. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two dudes who have never cried and never will, Sean Pryor and AJ Benz. <laughs> How the heck are you? Not once. Nope. Now, don't you cry. Not no. once. I, uh, I I almost did one time, and it was like because I couldn't record Dragon Ball Z as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I but think you that didn't actually cry, though? Nope. Same exact situation, but it was Pokemon. Yeah. So, nice. yeah. The only thing I have to remind, or, like Nux. say in, in response to that, though, Mike, is, Avenge me! <laughs> Avenge me! There it is. AJ can do anybody, even <laughs> Harry Dean Stanton. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> 30 seconds in. We're good. We're in. <laughs> All right, boys. It is time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss a movie that tackled the scary reality of World War III happening, a movie that perhaps doesn't seem so unrealistic as of the recording of this in 2022, God damn it, Mike. a movie where a realistic full-scale invasion of America almost happens if it wasn't for those meddling kids. <laughs> we are, of course, talking about 1984's Red Dawn. Red Dawn. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And for those looking to find this movie, as of the recording of this episode, mid April 2002, uh, it is available on YouTube TV if you have that subscription for your oh. TV service. Also, if you want to get that Showtime subscription, you can get that 30 day trial, not mm. seven days, 30 day free trial. Also, if you've already used an email address, just use a different one. I was just going to say, you're like, good to go. That's uh, what I did. Take a you're look on your Roku. You might already have it. Yep. You know? You might be spending seven dollars for that extension. You don't know. Yeah. Don't and know. what I like to do is put it in my calendar thirty days from now. Go, <laughs> cancel that. Cancel. However, I always forget, and that's yeah. why I have stars. I still, did that so. for an app. I, what was? It? Oh, OnlyFans. I did that. <laughs> oh, okay. oh no. Uh, yeah, uh, no big deal. Twenty twenty. <laughs> So, in order to properly dissect and review this Love movie me. with a modern eye, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, let's start with you. Tell us the first time you saw this movie and what your nostalgic rating is. So, the first time I saw this movie was actually, uh, I believe my brother Ray showed it to me. Raymond. Raymond. Yeah. Um, for the formal, you know. <laughs> um, but I think... That's what I remember uh, watching it for the most part. It was I wasn't necessarily really young. I think I was like fourteen, maybe fifteen when I did end up watching it. But it, it was it was in this weird. That's in this weird time frame where this was when it came out a very violent movie. Yes. And when me seeing it, I'm already in like the sweet hot zone of like violent movies, right? <laughs> Been playing so, GTA all day. GTA, you know, <laughs> like what would that be? That'd be like, you know, 2002 or something. Yeah. 2000. So you're like, you're already in the hotbed of like whatever Arnold already put out. And like, oh, you yeah. know what I mean? All of the lethal weapons. <laughs> um, and so, but I wasn't necessarily like jarred by it per se, right? But I do remember really enjoying um, kind of the idea. You know, this is a very this is a very quintessential idea um, that people think about a lot, right? So, um, first time I watched it, uh, thought it was fun, but didn't didn't spark me too hard. So I'm just gonna give this a five point eight. Sean, what about you, man? Uh, I watched this uh, with my brother. Uh, at our babysitter's house, my mom had to go to work in the morning, and she would bring us to this lady's house uh, before we like caught the bus to school or before we walked to school. Uh, and this old lady, 
I think you've mentioned her before. We've right? talked yeah. about her. Yeah, this you is gotta find her. This is one of those movies she showed me, uh, along with uh, When a Stranger Calls, which is a great movie to show a kid, especially <laughs> with when you're a babysitter. I'm just gonna call her Glenda. I feel like she's a Glenda. So Glenda, she she had like <laughs> emphysema or something like that, and would like always always cough into like a napkin and like show us what she coughed up. So that's that and Red oh, Dawn. I just um. God. So zero, <laughs> it's so like <laughs> when I first watched it, I I just I, the only thing I remember and it is ingrained in my mind. And when I rewatch this movie, I'm like oh there it is, is the first scene when they shoot the school up. Oh yeah, and the the kid hanging out the window terrified me as and a kid. And you had to go yeah. to school. Right I had to go to school. Like I just watched. I don't know what I just watched a documentary. I don't know. <laughs> uh, back then, I don't even know what I thought about it. To be honest, I'm gonna say probably a four. Four for Sean. Guys, I'm going to blow your mind. I've never seen this movie. Oh, my God. It's been a while since this has happened where it's not been a pre-planned. I've never seen it. I don't know why. Because think about it. I was two when this movie came out. And obviously this is... Perfect age. According to my right? So technically I should have made it about 13 more years to then I could have seen that. But, But by that time... Like this was not a like important film, right? Like, but when this movie was made, it was like very important. This yeah. is yeah. some scary stuff going on. But I don't know why. I just never saw it. And then they made the remake, and I was like, not gonna see that either. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think anybody saw the remake. But I dude, not one single lick. I knew nothing. I knew what the premise was, but I really did it. Mm. So for me, I, I got nothing. All right. Wow. So okay. this was you're gonna hear my exact r- thoughts on first time ever watching this. Fair enough, man. But we do have an executive producer today, Tyler Dark. Here's what his nostalgia review is here. Hey, guys, Tyler here with a small explanation background on why on which my nostalgic reviews are based on. I'm a 90s baby, so nine out of ten of these types of reviews are going to be times when my dad introduced me to the movie. Him being a big movie buff growing up. Shout out to Papa Wayne. All right, Papa Wayne. Red Dawn was no exception to this. It was one of my favorite teenage would my friends and I be badasses if the world came crashing down (laughs) type movie. hundred percent. I can't even count how many times those friends and I would talk about this movie discuss what would happen if the russians attacked Ooh. discussions like who would fill important roles in the group and our rendezvous point if said event were to occur <laughs> it was hours well spent just talking and planning and of course yelling the occasional wolverines <laughs> yeah uh ours very much enjoyed all stemming from this one movie this 1984 classic starring chris hemsworth josh peck <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> 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 but seriously with a great cast of names like patrick swayze leah thompson charlie sheen and many more how could i as an impressionable adventurous teenage boy at the time not absolutely love this movie my nostalgic re- review for this one is going to be a big Eight out of ten. Wow. So nostalgic rating as a group, that puts us at a 5.93, which is right down there. You're not going to believe this. Kind of makes sense. Okay. Tied with Stand By Me. Huh. Whoa. That sort of fits. Is this a back-to-back feature? Oh, wow. This is a great back-to-back feature. That sort of fits in a weird way, doesn't it? It's a little hard for me. I don't know why. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well... That's where we land. So we're going to see, we're going to dissect this whole thing from a modern eye. But first, we get to learn all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Sean, what do you got, man? Oh, yeah, we do. You ready for this? All right. Cool. No. That was rhetorical anyway. Produced by Barry <laughs> Beckerman, Sidney Beckerman, and Buzz Fight Shan. Fight Year. Buzz <laughs> Fight Year. Fight. Fight. <laughs> Fight, feet, feet shans. You got it. Uh, Story by Kevin Reynolds, written by Kevin Reynolds and John Milius, edited by Tom Noble, cinematography by Rick Waite, music by Basil Paladoris. I don't know if there's any relation to uh, Squints. Uh, directed by John Milius. John Milius is m- primarily known for like his screenwriting. He uh, he wrote the masterpiece Apocalypse Now, uh, and also wrote and directed, I believe, uh, Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. Cast: Patrick Swayze, C. Thomas Howell, Leah Thompson, Charlie Sheen, Darren Daltman, Dalton, Jennifer Grey, Bra- Brad Savage, Ben Johnson, Harry Dean Stanton, and Powers Booth. The film was originally conceived with the title Ten Soldiers. Kevin Reynolds wrote a rough script and sent it around to be read. Producer Barry Beckerman read the script and wanted to make the film with someone, sa- with someone saying about the script, thought it had the potential to become a tough, taut art picture, made on a modest budget that could possibly break out to find a wider audience. What producers want to hear, definitely right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I just want to make a, a, a art war movie. Yeah, on Fund a Fund it, budget. please. Yeah. Reynolds originally wanted to direct, but the producers wanted a more experienced person at the helm. 
The film went to MGM to be made with Frank Yablons as senior vice president. Yablons, uh, the it's a kind of a lineage of producers there, uh, like Erwin Yablons, I think is his son, perhaps, uh, Frank Yablons, but he uh, produced such uh, movies as Halloween uh, ah. and pretty much all of the Halloweens. After the script got around to more people, the story changed from a tough, taut, anti-war art movie to a more teen Rambo kind of film, and that's when John Millis got on board. Being a fan of war, film Milius did a pass on the script after going to a think tank and, <laughs> and devising a plausible scenario in which the story could occur. Milius got $1.25 million for directing the film and a gun of his choice. <laughs> He's uh, You can buy any gun you want yeah. with your $1.25 million. He but loves I want guns. Another gun. uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I read that he went to like a think tank with, I think, like a... Uh, like a war veteran or something like that, okay. and we're just like, okay, so how how would this work? He's like, well, I'll tell you how it works. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, he's got a bunker in the back or some shit, yeah. probably. Uh, the movie was Ugh. filmed mostly in Las Vegas, New Mexico, and after Milius came on board, the film's budget increased from 11 million to 19 million. Eventually, Red Dawn was the 20th highest-grossing film of 1984, taking in 38.3 million dollars overall. Damn, son. Okay. Wow. So before we get into the full film review, AJ in our next segment does research for us, tells us what the critics and fans alike had to say about this movie. You're right. <laughs> Did you do your research? You bet. Is this your homework, Larry? Are you right? Is this your homework, Larry? <laughs> Is this your homework? Walter. No, okay. <laughs> By the way, I want to stop you. That yeah. was a fantastic impression. Uh, when you go, Walter, of <laughs> course, this is homework. <laughs> like, you're really fucking good at impressions, by the way. Thanks. I just want to let you know that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Walter. <laughs> Sorry, we're moving on. It's we're not moving on. Yeah, we, moving can't, on. <laughs> we can't quote Big Lebowski in this episode. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> well, John Milius was in the Big Lebowski. So yeah, that's true. That's John true. Goodman was based on yeah. it. Walter was. There so. you go. Uh, okay. So anyways, it's your favorite time. Oh? Before we jump into the episode, it is... The tomato meter. Gross. <laughs> so good. You're right. <laughs> that splat is right on point. Oh no. Now, not as low as you might think, though. It is a splat at 48 percent on wanna, the tomato meter. You want to know where that throws mm. us? In all the movies we have done, that is just below Legend of Billie Jean, just above Fifty First Dates. <laughs> well, okay. All that's, right. That's what the critics think of this movie. Let's hit okay. That is a triple feature. <laughs> that's, uh. that's weird. I don't like that. <laughs> Audiences gave it a little bit more credit at 65 percent. Mm. Uh, and of course, uh, IMDb. We always got to hear from them. Six point three out of ten. That is huh. just below Home Alone. Just below <laughs> Home Alone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just want to let you know that's where you guys rank this. Yeah. No. Well, People fine. of the world. I guess it's also a siege movie. Like, yeah. True. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. All right. Uh, I I ended up wow. uh, taking a lot more from critical reviews this time around. Um, because they're kind of they're kind of all over the place. Okay. So the Miami the Miami Herald gave it an eighty eight out of hundred. Bill Cosford, he said, "This is what we call a movie movie, a movie that throws nuance and self consciousness and artiness to the wind, and concentrates on the slam bam. It's richly <laughs> entertaining. It's big and it moves fast." Okay. What is the opposite of a movie movie? Uh, a a book movie, <laughs> a movie book, book movie. Yeah, just just a screenplay, a movie on tape. <laughs> I don't know. Movie. <laughs> uh, this is a podcast podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, oh, good call, good yeah, call. Yeah, so yeah. Good old yeah. slam bam, good time. I know, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. The Globe and Mail. John Haslett Cuff gave it a 75 out of 100. It's pure American corn, but expertly and entertainingly harvested. The casting is excellent, the performances are so good, and the emotional thrust of the film is so strong that it's impossible not to enjoy. Okay. Keep in mind, both of these were at the time yes, of, course. Uh, of the movie, okay? Mm. When, upon release, 1984, okay? Um, there's a couple negatives in here, too. Go figure. Um, the Washington Post, and I'm just going right on down. We'll go for a 50 out of 100. Director John Milius, the barbarian behind Conan, Co-wrote the anti-gun control, anti-communist, survivalist script with Kevin Reynolds. Sick and silly as it is, the idea could have been intriguing had it gone anywhere, which it didn't. Oh, no. Big, big snub. (laughs) 
<laughs> and last but not least, TV Guide, who we trust on movies. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, <laughs> I'm the TV here. Okay, you watch <laughs> movies on TV. Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> gave it a 20 out of 100. Uh, and they said, another infantile right-wing fantasy from writer-director John Milius. This cinematic embodiment of the paranoid delusions of militarists, survivalists, and television evangelists is definitely a film for the Reagan era. Red Dawn is simply too simplistic and inept to be taken seriously. So you got that's. I just wanted to give the full spectrum. Yeah, yeah. you know, a um, couple of fun ones here. This is this is a one out of ten. Uh, Rocket B fifty two in uh, two thousand seven oh. said, "The Russians are coming! Hooray! Hooray! Mm. Bid day! Bid day! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, warning! Spoilers! Oh no! I thought this movie was stupid back when I saw it. It doesn't get any less stupid with time." <laughs> the plot, <laughs> USA gets overrun by Russians. Intrepid, yeah, right. <laughs> intrepid bunch of youngins fight them in Colorado. Uh, it's hard to say what's more stupid, the notion of America being invaded by Russia or the sight of the Soviet tanks rolling over the mountains of Colorado or the coast. Uh, well, it says, or, or the cast. I'll, I'll, let him, I'll let him have that, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the cast, C. Thomas Howell as Gritty Wolverine, Leah Thompson as Tragic Wolverine, <laughs> Charlie Sheen as Pain in the Ass Wolverine, <laughs> Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, and let's state the obvious. Dancing Wolverines. Any minute you expect them to throw <laughs> off their camouflage and mambo. <laughs> <laughs> Though, of course, Dirty Dancing was three years after this opus. Oh, okay. Of course. If you don't know what a Wolverine is, please experience Red Dawn for yourself and find out. And absolutely everyone in this movie is a stereotype. Everyone. Russian, or American, or Cuban. But then again, this thing was directed by three-fisted He-Man, John Milius. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What does three-fisted mean? I don't know. I imagine is it means he's got a big third Is that, what they're, is that yeah. what they're going for? I hope. Okay. Uh, I think they're saying he thinks he has, maybe. I yeah. <laughs> I don't, know. I, I don't know. I try not to think too hard on no that one. No big deal. I kind of like that review, though. Um, I, I took an excer excerpt from, um, now this is not actually from Red Dawn, but it's Red Dawn, the remake. God damn it. Okay, <laughs> but it was ahead. from Eric Snyder, okay, Eric's okay, bad okay, reviews. Cool. Okay. 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 This is a, just a small excerpt from there. It says, uh, <laughs> there are many reasons not to remake 1984's Red Dawn. One good reason is that it's a stupid movie. <laughs> <laughs> Another is that it's a paranoid fantasy based on Cold War fears that no longer have any basis in reality. <laughs> and that's all that's all he really mentioned. He also he also says uh that the basically the the whole premise and trying to remake it was just uh, it was just bad. There yeah. are movies that it, it'd be like remaking There's Passion no of the point. Christ. Yeah. Like it, you did it. We made the movie. Yeah. There's no need to do it again. It, it, yeah. There wasn't a point to the remake. And I'm gonna go on. I actually own the Red Dawn on DVD, oh, the, the no. new one. Wow. I know, I know. Christmas hey. gift, white elephant <laughs> gift. I think I got. <laughs> so, Did no, you get the box set. <laughs> <laughs> it's it came a with my feature. Home Alone copy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it came with it came with three seasons of Drake and Josh. Is what it came <laughs> with. So, <laughs> no, no, but I I did own that movie. It's it's not wonderful, but at the, at the same time, my biggest pet peeve of that is Josh Peck himself. I just don't get that guy, and I'm. I'm not gonna say I hate his acting, but I don't want to watch it. So you so. have seen the remake? Oh yes. Okay. Oh, many times. I'll be asking some questions. Please. <laughs> I'm starting got off questions. with why. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> starting off with why did you watch it? Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> I'm what AJ. I'm a movie buff. What, well, what gives you the right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different podcast. <laughs> oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that all you got, AJ? That's all I got. We are seconds away from reviewing this movie scene by scene with a modern eye. But That's first, me. we got to talk about Cedar Ridge, our amazing sponsor. We've mentioned uh, Terry Orr from North Carolina before. He's the one that met my neighbor. Oh, yeah. And they bonded over, like, knowing this podcast. And then he did actually order some Cedar Ridge, sent us his review of what he thought about it, which I think this is a cool thing. If you've ordered some Cedar Ridge, yeah. tell us what you thought about it. Absolutely. Here's what Terry said. He said, it occurred to me that I didn't give a proper review other than I like the bourbon. So here it goes. Warning, spoilers. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh -huh. Cedar Ridge makes amazing whiskey. Okay. okay. <laughs> my my sample pack had the bourbon, the rye, and the quintessential single malt. Bourbon, 
Great flavor, mellow, nice caramel note, no harsh burn. I do agree it isn't a sipper, though. I mean, you can sip it, but it's mm-hmm. there are better options for a sipper if you want from the Cedar Ridge family. Sure. And he agrees with that. The rye, I fucking love this rye. Full flavor, bold, but not overpowering with the warm peppery pepperiness of a great rye. This is my favorite of the three. We've not talked about the rye that much. They yeah. do make a fantastic rye. In fact, the rye and the bourbon mix together make the Slipknot. That's right. So in case you want to know that. And the single malt, single malt, he said, a very nice sipping whiskey. This scotch has a subtle smoky note that makes it ride the line between peated and non-peated tasting scotches. I agree. It's I'm not a scotch fan, but I love the Cedar Ridge. I haven't had it It, yet. We should do that next. Yeah, we should. As you can see in our YouTube channel, we are down to the last sip of our (laughs) of how many bottles of Cedar Ridge we've gone through here. Uh, and so he finishes off, said, I'll be ordering more, maybe just working my way through everything they make. You guys are awesome. Keep up the good work, and please review PCU. I agree. Have you guys ever seen PCU? No. Okay. I don't think I've ever even Here's heard of it. Here's the problem. It's an absolutely incredible movie. I'm not going to tell you th- anything about it, okay. but I've been meaning to do what we do in this show and rewatch it to see if it holds up. Okay. However, you can't find it anywhere. Oh, okay. Wow. It is no- nowhere to be found. So I might have to like buy it, and then we'll share it. Because sure. it, it's we got to watch. We got to watch we'll, that movie. We'll just, you know, get our audience to the wayside and be like, you can't find this it. This is an episode yeah. for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, again, go to the local score, store, pick up a bottle of Cedar Ridge whiskey. If your local distributor doesn't have it, go online to cedarridgewhiskey.com. Mm-hmm. Order some right to your door like Terry Orr. Oh, nice. <laughs> pick a bottle. Wow. Go for it. Get the sampler pack. Go for it. Just like Terry did. Cedar Ridge Whiskey dot com. How about uh, Cedar Ridge Whiskey dot com? Cedar Ridge Whiskey dot com. Well, boys, what do you say? We grab our best friends, stop to get all the dry food supplies, warm clothes and weapons that we can and head into the mountains to defend our freedom and family from those pinko commie Russians. Whoa. The chairs against the wall. The chairs against the wall. Wolverine. Wolverine. All right, so before an autumn school day in September in a small Colorado mountain town called Calumet, Jed Eckert is dropping his younger brother Matt and their friend Aardvark off at school. While giving a lecture, their teacher, history teacher notices paratroopers landing outside of the school. What? (laughs) Just know with that name. I'm going to keep saying it. (laughs) The soldiers open fire, and that's actually not his real name, by the way. I think it's like Arturo. Arturo. Yeah, but they call him Aardvark. I don't know. The the soldiers open fire on the classroom. Matt and Aardvark (laughs) escape when Jed pulls up alongside their friends Daryl, Robert, and Danny. A Cuban colonel named Bella oversees the occupation of the town. After stopping at Robert's father's gas station to grab supplies, the boys arrive in the mountains and set up camp. Arguments erupt about what to do next. Did the beginning text freak you guys out as much as it did me no, sean i'm gonna tell you why it didn't freak me out because i couldn't fucking read it it was <laughs> like they're like this happened this happened this happened this happened move yeah. it. here we go uh, <laughs> uh, oh okay all right I, 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 had, I had to stop and go back three times yeah just to get the gist of what they were talking about it, it does go super fast but yes to your credit that's a very very scary like quick breakdown yeah of like okay this is how this is gonna happen yeah Oof, man and i, I don't know I don't know why, but there's something also very even more off putting about the color of the text. <laughs> but but really? that really adds to the uh I don't know, ickiness. Yeah. <laughs> know. yeah. But yeah, you're like it's like, you know, it really does. It breaks it down. Russia has its worst harvest and then Poland, you right. know, yeah, it's, it's left alone. It's left defend. alone, which yeah. is which I think is a yeah, very right. eerie statement to to make. We're the the we have all the friends. We would yeah. never We're be We're the alone. Bugs. Uh, uh, <laughs> that, we've done nothing wrong. You know, we've ne- well, uh, but yeah. but that is the thing because as a person who had never seen this before, first of all, I'm trying to figure out what that is. Like, oh, geez, can't, couldn't we just? <laughs> so we, I, I think I know about NATO. Okay, it? okay, cool. And then within what three minutes, this movie is off like a rocket. It, it is fucking going. soars, man. It it's crazy how how like we don't even get to know these characters no. really. And it's there's nothing. Mm-hmm. And I got to be honest, man. Like this this will kind of be I guess a little bit of a gripe throughout this whole show for me. Is it like? So after that text, then it's like you get the title card, Red yeah. Dawn, and it looks like, oh, super cool 80s. Like, I bet is Red <laughs> Dawn dope, like, dope as hell. You know, all the boys going out and getting He's drunk. And Red Dawn of the Dead is what yeah. Sean's thinking. I was like, awesome. Let's go to the mall <laughs> and hang out. Yeah. Um, but no, this, I mean, it's just, I don't know if it's a good mix of like the 80s cheesiness with like a serious subject yeah. matter. I'm not. I'm. I'm still not sure how to feel about it, and I hope you guys kind of sway me one way or the other. 
I well, was I was sitting here going, fuck yes, Frank McRae's in this movie. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh my god! <laughs> I was really excited to see what was happening. Is that is that the lieutenant the teacher, from the teacher? Uh, uh, he uh, last action hero. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. He's in a lot of stuff. Yeah, a- and it was just like cool. Oh no, <laughs> he's dead. They just shot him. He's yeah. dead. Then the kid died. They just opened fire at the fucking school. It is, it is terrifying. A, it is a really intense scene and so uh i when i was watching this i was my final watch through i think and i was into the i was in kind of to the end and every now and again alicia will uh she'll kind of walk in or come home from work whatever it happens to be right and sit down and start watching what whatever watching? i'm doing right and she's like yeah i don't know i guess it's okay i was like well you oh, need patrick's waiting <laughs> you need to watch the first like 15 to 20 minutes because it will just launch you into this movie yeah. and she was and we did that and she was like yeah you're right <laughs> did she then want to see what happened after that cuz it it does a very good job of being like if you happen to just sit down to watch this movie you're in you yeah know, you got to know what's happening from I, here on out I, I agree and that's that's the thing uh with like you're saying you don't get to know these these characters much at all, like uh, anything really, and you don't know who's who's going to be in this movie for the long haul. You don't know really what's going on. I think that really adds. I think that adds to the confusion and atmosphere of of maybe it's like they're trying to get that out there to you, maybe a little bit too, yeah. um, of of the feelings of how this would happen. Uh, and then I also think that the. It's really strange how you don't see a lot of close-ups mm. on individual characters a lot, other than maybe Patrick Swayze. That's true. You don't mm. see them really characterize like individual characters. Get to know this person because yeah. here's a close-up. Yeah, you don't you don't get that a lot. You get right. a lot of further away shots, um, longer kind of shots. You know, uh, That's it's a, it's kind of interesting. It's a good observation. I didn't, I didn't think about that, but it, yeah, I mean, to your point, I do I do think. To me, like starting it off and not getting any character development right off the bat, uh, and it just it just adds to the chaos of it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, I mean, then Char- this is Charlie Sheen's first movie, so you're like, don't know who he is. You know, I've seen you've probably seen point. Patrick Swayze and some other movies and stuff like that um, at this point. But like, it does add to the craziness of like, if this did happen, it would just be an instant, you know. And, and then you would have to like get all that like our. Uh, uh, or our executive producer says like you'd have to get your boys you know you'd yeah. have to get you like get your family like do, what are you going to yeah. do yeah. uh it it does it does perfectly kind of do that uh, add add to the paranoia but did you guys see so he's he's talking about Genghis Khan and the Mongols yeah. and stuff like that uh did you see the poster of Genghis Khan no yeah yeah there's he had, a like, poster bunch of stuff up. there's a poster of Genghis Khan but it's a caricature of John Milius <laughs> as Genghis Khan. As Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah. So go back and watch it, and it's it's like a perfect caricature of his face, but in like a Genghis Khan kind of regalia. It, it does make sense because that is what I would imagine Genghis Khan would look like if if uh, John Goodman played him. Sure. Oh so. my God. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Excuse me, miss, when did the Mongols rule China? <laughs> I don't know, I just work here. <laughs> That's what I wanted to see. Yeah. That's my 80s type of movie. This yeah, was yeah. like, whoa, this is not the 80s I want to be I'm in. I'm saying, man, like the first time I watched it and that kid, that kid's just hanging out the window, I think he yeah. might have a bullet hole it, in his head. He has a bullet hole in his head. Um, it's just super scary, and so it's, it's stuck with me forever. It's a very jarring thing, and I know we'll, we'll talk a lot about it, but like you say, this was like the, it was the first PG- 13 movie yeah and then like ever and then on top of that like this is one of the when it came out one of the most grisliest movies right that that came out and they said there's like some crazy breakdown out there that I says do you have it so the, the film, most violent movie the film made the guinness book of records for having the most acts of violence of any film up until that time yeah according to their calculations 134 acts of violence occur per hour or 2.23 per minute. Dude, like that's I crazy. Mean. So so that and and to your point, they uh, back when this came out, there was only uh G, P, G and right. R right. Uh, ratings and and uh, did you do you know the movie that made them decide it wasn't th- this movie wasn't the one that that made up the PG-13. Right. Do you know what movie came along? Wasn't that? it Spielberg uh not Raiders, but um 
Temple of Temple Doom. Temple of Doom, yeah, yeah. Temple of Doom oh. came out, and people He's were tearing like, a heart out of somebody. Yeah. They're like, this is not parental guidance. Yeah, wow. A lot of parental told, guidance. But also, it, it wasn't bad enough to be R, though. And so that's how they came up with PG-13. There was actually a movie that was supposed to get the first PG-13, but it sat on the shelves that's for five right. months. Yeah, yeah. The Flamingo Kid. Yeah, we yeah. all know that movie. <laughs> Everybody yeah. knows that movie. <laughs> yeah, I watch that every other week. <laughs> so it, apparently it sat on the shelves for five months, then Red Dawn came along and okay. just like, PG-13, that's so us. when you check that gotcha. movie out, it, please be 13. Um, <laughs> did yes. you guys notice, like, the, the our have you guys ever been like skydiving or parachuted or anything like that? No. No. Do you, are parachutes I supposed parasailed. to have holes in them? Yeah. They I think, are? I think it's the for like the sides. It's for like guidance or something or so they can kind of maneuver themselves, I think. I was just like, what? This doesn't seem like a pretty good invasion. Like if you want to <laughs> if you want like troops on the ground, it doesn't seem like a very good Boots method on to, the ground. to yeah. poke holes in their parachutes. That's a good but point. adding to that, they a lot of stuntmen got injured in that scene <laughs> like they literally dropped him from planes and they land on the ground some of them like just landed very awkwardly or you know didn't get enough velocity or any, or something like that uh on Jeez. the ground and uh they also said that themselves. Fi- five of the 36 that that landed during right. that first thing five got blown off a of course <laughs> up to a mile yeah. And one of them got stuck in a tree, and he had to convince locals that he wasn't an enemy <laughs> soldier from Russia. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, dude, listen. Like, listen to my voice. I'm not Russian. <laughs> you, What's your name, <laughs> son? I imagine like the the people who at the farm when Marty McFly goes That's Back a, to the Future the first he's time. Into the <laughs> human form. Like, shoot it! Shoot it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unbelievable. I do. I do like that the town is called Calumet. Yeah. And it, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna figure out some sort of conspiracy because we did The Shining and Calumet is a is a Ooh. thing in that movie. Mm. S- and and Calumet's like a baking soda, baking powder thingy. So That's a thing. Get get at look us. It up? Cal- but Calumet w- it was supposed to be the script was Calumet with Cal- Michigan. Cal- Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they just decided that no, we're just gonna move it to Colorado, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Oh well, Calumet. I'm looking it up. It just says specialty products manufacturer. Hmm. It's just the name of a company. Well, maybe they're from Kelly Matt. Yeah, maybe. Oh, oh, that's yeah. fascinating. Huh. That's this great. Is our hey, sorry, talk. I brought that. Up. <laughs> <laughs> well, fascinating well, talk, guys. To, to bring it back around, though, Sean, you're right. If that's what their parachutes look like, then what does their underwear and socks look like? Come Am on I right? Now. Am I right? Come on now. <laughs> All right, I'll move on. All right. Dude, no, <laughs> but the intensity of this movie never lets like, never lets up in this first scene. They're they're. There's this craziness of them getting in the car, getting in the car and yeah. get away. And all oh, they're here. And then they like then they make it to a roadblock that's already set up and shit like that. And right. I mean like this this materialized really fast, which was a huge they even try to explain it later on. I'm sure we'll get to it, but I still don't understand how this happened. Yeah. Without anyone knowing anything. Yeah, and about especially this invasion. Especially in like a small town ish like this. It doesn't seem like they would go for Calumet. Colorado it does like it's just like weird I mean I apparently I watched it like a YouTube video it was like uh Red Dawn if it actually happened you know yeah um and they're were, they were like well none of this would have ever happened because we would resort to nuclear bombs before any ground troops or anything like that so that's cool and scary awesome um but Oof. it it said that it said that in the plot of Red Dawn like they had nuked all major U.S. cities first yeah. and then started deploying it's like, troops. wouldn't we have known about this yeah you would think yeah, you think that's they'd be that's on. the confusing part about it. Yeah, um, I, I they do kind of give that breakdown later on, or, or uh, you know, Colonel Tanner Tanner does. He kind of gives a breakdown. Um, they do talk a little bit about he he gives a reference to some nuclear war that did happen. Mm, yeah, at, at one point. Um, but yeah, it it does seem like I get it. I'm sure that this isn't the only place in the world or in the, in the country it's happening. They're probably deploying across like a certain All at line. The same time. You know, and and yeah, trying to trying to make make it hostile across a large area so it makes U.S. scramble. You know, right. I don't know. Yeah, sure, you just try to justify it however you can. But yeah. you're right; it's it's the idea, the school, uh, the the whole school start, and then them buzzing out of there in that truck. By the way, badass truck. It is pretty dope. I that truck was. Awesome. I wrote it down. I'm like, is that my prop? I know. I, I don't. Uh, I, I I hate doing. Uh, I hate doing like vehicles as props. Uh, so it's uh, not going to be mine. Okay, because uh, okay. we do have okay. a new okay. soundbite okay. ready for this. Okay. <laughs> okay. He's, he's so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I just forget which button it is. Hot, right? buttons. <laughs> this out. Hot buttons. 
So they, yeah. yeah, they take that truck to Robert's father's gas station. Right. They load up. They load it. He's helping them out. He, they, did you notice they passed over the Capri Sun? Yeah, I yeah. would have got Come Capri on, Sun. Now. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Co- you want Coca Cola? Like, yeah. get some Capri Sun. Yeah, get some juice cooler in there, man. Ju- yeah, get some juice in you yeah. instead of that bad sugar shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Sugar shit. Sugar uh, shit. Swayze's character Jed seems very ready for all this. Yeah. Like he swoops all them up from the school and nobody else, um, and <laughs> <laughs> gets all of his friends and just doesn't give a fuck about anybody else. But I mean, he's but so he's not in high school. Yeah, right? he's older right, than right. them. So like, what about his friends or family? He yeah. he comes back just to basically get his brother. Get is, he, is he is he McConaughey? Is he? Uh, he might be. Might be. He might, he might be. That's what he likes about these high school. That's Never right. mind. Uh, <laughs> but so you're. That's my thought though. Is like he's not. He doesn't have any friends. He's like he's not obviously not going to school. He says I've got to. I'll be spending my time at the station. He's fishing or something or something like that. It's like yeah. I, I don't know what exactly he was talking about. Um, but yeah, he. That's my big thing is what does he do? Who is he? Yeah. Why is he just... And guess what? We'll never know. Because yeah. they took zero time to tell us about any of these yeah. people. I don't even know if these kids were actually friends. That's a good point. <laughs> they really yeah. aren't. It's pretty much just um, Aardvark and, and Charlie Sheen's no. character. I'm yeah, going to say it. Yeah. Maddie and Aardvark. I don't Aardvark. mind that you say it. I just don't like that it's that. That's <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it is. <laughs> but, but the other... Like, clearly, fucking Darren... Uh, or, sorry, Daryl. Well, they know Darryl each other. Daryl and Danny, like, fuck those guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Danny is definitely... They don't definitely, fit in at all. Danny's definitely outside of this, yeah. right? Daryl is in class with Maddie in the beginning. He's the class president. He's the class president. Very important. Um and by the way, so I'm gonna get to I'm gonna get to that in just a second because I need to comment on class president Patrick Swayze in this whole scene though in this whole uh, uh, sequence of them getting out of the uh, supply shop yep. right uh, is is honestly one of the parts that kind of gives you goosebumps because it's his reactions to like looking back and seeing he's just like oh god oh god and then he's and then when they're driving. And they see the barricade when he's telling Maddie to give him the gun. He's like, is it there? Yep. He's like, put the Love rest it. in my pocket. It's very, very uh, <laughs> genuine, it feels. It is, it is intense. Yeah. And he said, when he's sitting there, he sees the barricade. Like, when he when he says, oh, oh God. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Okay. He's like, I'm going to turn off quick. And he's like, he's got to, like, tell himself as much as everybody else. Yeah. And I thought that was really, really good. It did. It did like, I, I'm glad you pointed that out. It does seem like if you were, like, watching, a, a, like, a crazy video of, like, a tornado passing by. Yeah. Like, and then people are filming it. And, like, you would hear oh people God, in the back, oh like, God. oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Like, yeah. it sounds genuine. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. 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 No, and, th- and so then they get up to the mountains. And, like, Jed is basically like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. But I get it. I feel see both sides of that because the other kids are like, we our fa- what about our families? Like, why are we being selfish and being up here? Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm siding with them, going, yeah, let's go. But then Jed's like, your families want you to be alive. Yeah. And going back to town, we don't know that might kill all of us. I'm, I'm with Jed too. Yeah. Like I'd be the guy in the middle. Who would you be? Would you be an automatic? I'm on Jed's team. Would you be an automatic like? little wiener boy and being like we gotta go back to town or would you just be kind of like well when you put it like that (laughs) i guess i don't have much of a choice michael i didn't mean little uh, like like little wiener boy i meant like little wiener boy no you know i I think (laughs) i still bad i'd I'd totally be i think i'd be a little wiener boy team (laughs) team team little wiener i think i'm going Uh, little wiener boy i don't think i've ever said that before like (laughs) little wiener boy This uh, is bad. I'm Team Wiener Boys. <laughs> uh, forget, okay, forget. I know you're gonna, you're gonna and, come be and three, two, two one. So you're gonna come be smart, or you're gonna be a fucking idiot. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want. <laughs> are you are you automatic team tough guy, or are you automatic like I need to get back to town? I don't know what or I would in the do. Middle? I would like to think that like if if I'm in this position now, like if I if I had already left town and loaded up, and I have like these people with me, I'd be like, okay, this we kind of need to just do this. And then, like, because maybe not a lot of people made it out, you know, so we should yeah. probably s- still do this, form a team, and do something, and maybe we can figure something out, and maybe we can get our parents after, you know. Yeah. High school age, I'd probably be, more, like, more where Maddie is at, right? And you're, he's, he doesn't know, if but your he's going to stick with his older sure, brother, yeah, yeah. right? So that's kind of where I'd probably be. But 
if I'm like this age, I'm probably I am probably more on the Jed side, even though it's probably <laughs> still being a little bit like. You hey, know? we got animals at home. We gotta yeah. go back for them. <laughs> That's a <Yeah>. good point. <laughs> I'm thinking, but I'm thinking like I don't know. Like I've, I I am gonna like hang out here and and cool it for a little bit at least, yeah. you know. Um, but the whole th- that whole sequence though, as they're going through this, he says, he's. <laughs> I love it when he's like, uh, uh, Daryl, class president. Darryl. He says, he says, well, maybe we should go. Maybe we should go back. And he's like, Patrick Swayze, like, no one's going anywhere. <laughs> and he's like, well, we should take a vote on it. And he's just like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. It's communism. No. <laughs> it's communism in their little circle. There's no, de- so there's no democracy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, but it is. It's just like, it's just like. It's, it's Kelly met student body president. I <laughs> yeah, yeah. You hold no rank here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I motion that we turn ourselves in. And Daddy's like, well, I second it because, well, I don't know anything that I'm doing. And and it's like you're the you're the worst person right now, Daddy. And what a hell of a fight and scuffle they get into. He's just like, well, you no, know, and he just he like takes like. A, a half a second, yeah. and then throws the beer can at him yeah, or whatever, whatever it, is. it is, and then they scuffle over the fire and just, over like, just the throws fire. him down. Like, damn, yeah, <laughs> that was the most realistic part because they're like, <laughs> it's like you're standing in a fire. Yeah, guys. careful. Okay, so just <laughs> I was just watching their feet in that fire. I'm like, <laughs> um, oh, okay, we're good. Ooh, uh, uh-huh. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ugh. All right, so let's move this on. So while hunting deer, Robert makes a kill. A few weeks later, Jed, Matt, and Robert slip into Calumet to see what has happened in their absence. They learn that the town has been conquered and find their fathers at a communist re-education camp. The next morning, the group goes to the ranch of their father's friend, Mr. Mason. He informs them of the he informs the boys of what's been going on in the war. He asks them to take his granddaughters, Tony and Erica, with them. Meanwhile, Daryl's father, Calumet's mayor, collaborates with Colonel Bella. I don't know if you guys noticed, Ooh. but and I don't, I'm not. I'm pretty sure Milius would would not let this happen. But when they're shooting that deer, the the scope on that gun I think is backwards. <laughs> oh <laughs> I don't no! Know if you guys noticed, I didn't all. notice. I, like I the, the big end yeah. was where his eye was. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. Maybe he was sick that day. <laughs> like, just get the shot. He got it. <laughs> get the shot. Just hurry, just hurry up. I, right. I highly doubt. I did not grow up in a small town. You guys grew up in small towns. You probably know people that hunt. People that listen to this show probably hunt. Yeah. I highly doubt there's ever a case where anyone has drank the blood of the deer. They <laughs> Unless killed. they've watched this movie and, and then like, wanted to try it out, but then got deathly ill after. Can't you get really sick from that? I'm pretty sure. I can only imagine that you're drinking the warm blood. And Charlie Sheen's description does not help. That's kind of salty. It's like like eating a steak when you got a nosebleed. It's like, oh, what does that even mean? Oh God, God. oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but there are like I thought this was a joke. I was waiting for them to be like, oh, for, no, dude, no, just no, kidding. Don't, don't do it. it. Don't do it. And we need you it. actually. But I like I, I told you I I did a lot of uh, Native American studies in college and like yeah. there there is a sacred bond between when you when you hunt an animal and you kill it and you need to honor that animal and yeah. a lot of times it's doing something over the animal, perhaps even taking some blood and making a war pain out of it, but, like, drinking? Yeah. Huh? It just seems, like, ir- like irrational because, you know, <laughs> you probably want everyone tip-top shape. <laughs> I know, I was, I was gonna so, <laughs> like, cut to him drinking the blood and then, like, they're having a battle of their life or something between just, some Russians, and he's just like, dude. <laughs> 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 dude. <laughs> dude, maybe. He's, like, burping hold, and farting. Hold on a second. Robert... <laughs> Robert endures a mega change, though. Like they're like, you'll be a different man. And at first, I'm thinking this is just, you know, That's mentally. True. But maybe he like seriously yeah, got true. like a rabid disease. He does, he does become fucked like with his shit. He does become like the most rabid. He one does. Of them. <laughs> I imagine him being like he got like, rabies. It's like later on, you know, they're like they're like watching the <laughs> Russians walk by. It's like everybody quiet, 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 quiet. Go, 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 his stomach Shut just like Robert. rumbling. You like, made me eat the deer blood. Are you good, man? Get up. <laughs> this, there's no time to puke. Uh, is there anything so Russian as the thought of like a re-education camp? Ugh. Like that just feels so Russian to me of the yeah. of the old days. Like, yeah, we're gonna. 
get everyone and mm. we're just going to play tapes of of talking about how the u.s is bad and yeah. just have them sit in a yard well it's just, it's it's weird that they had all the propaganda ready to go ready to go and they I, already had flags made it's up weird right like did they i mean you would think maybe like major u.s cities they would like put up a flag and like start doing you know put up wasn't lenin and well, didn't i see like a poster of lenin was he I like in power at the time so mm, it could have been um but <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm the walrus <laughs> donnie please <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, um, please. <laughs> but yeah, no, it just seems like they would do that for like major cities, not like yeah, we need we need all of our troops and all of our guns and tanks and stuff deployed to Calumet. And also we need all of our posters and all of our merch and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> set up set up some shops. Set up the merch table <laughs> at the re education camp. <laughs> so so that way on their way in they Go can get your gear. They <laughs> Go get your koozies. <laughs> Re-education koozies. <laughs> we got your re-education lunchbox. Don't miss out on your re-education sneakers and sheets. Like, what are you talking this about? so Russian to me. This is awful. We, we got our, our re-education Russian koozies for one shoe. <laughs> peanut shells. One shoe. Peanut shells. Get your peanut shells. <laughs> not even peanuts. God damn, this sucks. What, what did you guys think of the dad? Harry Dean. H- Harry Dean. Yeah. What did you think about this whole uh, this whole interchange? Well, that's that's not their dad. That's not their dad. No. That doesn't look anything like him. <laughs> <laughs> I was really hoping you had something. <laughs> I no no. I got nothing. I'm just saying like no, nah, that wasn't him. <laughs> you know what? Just in my opinion, I don't think he had kids. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think that's it. I all drank deer blood. They don't know what the fuck's. I going love on. Harry Dean Stanton, so I do uh, yeah. love his scene. For sure, and I, I I believe every moment of him, yeah. As opposed to, I guess maybe him being their dad, <laughs> but uh, it's it's like the it's like one of the best lines of the movie is "Avenge me," you know. It's what's better, Wolver- the Wolverines or the Avenge me? Wolverines is definitely more iconic Kay. for sure, but yeah. I, I it's just Harry Dean Stanton, man. I can't you can't go wrong with him. He's he's definitely the the tough dad. I took my boys hunting a lot, and I was tough on them. And he even says he's like, I was I was hard on you boys. Now you understand why, and it's it's like, like I I know that a little bit, you know. Uh, like my dad wasn't like a hard ass or anything, but he he did that. Like we went hunting, we learned about you know conservation, and you know we went through the Boy Scouts, and like you know we we did that a lot. So it's like you know, I know where they're coming from and everything, and uh, that's one of those moments where you're like, thank God I know this because those other the other yeah. boys don't. A lot of the other boys don't. Yeah, you but know? you're 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 viewing that. I I viewed on first watch. I viewed it the same way as you. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm just I'm doing a because his performance is great in this yeah. moment. So I'm like yeah. siding with him. I'm yeah. like, yeah, you're right. That, you're right. On second watch, I don't think that's what he was referring to. I think he was a terrible father. I think he was abusive <laughs> and like they. I think I don't think he was a very good father to them. And this was like an excuse for him to just be like, see. <laughs> See, I told see? you. I can see that. Told you, it's coming. Because yeah, and like, because he's not. His advice is terrible. Like, don't, don't cry. And like, <laughs> then they take. This is just bad advice all around. Don't man. cry one more tear for me. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. I, that's how I. Upon next rewatch, that's how I was like. I don't know. Mm. Actually, I don't like this guy. I do like Swayze's reaction though, of like their kind of final goodbye. He's like, Dad, <laughs> takes a beat. Yes, son. I love you. <laughs> Just like, oh no. I, know I, you I do. don't I don't really buy a lot of the emotion like from it. Swayze or Charlie Sheen or any like, of the characters. Really any of them. <laughs> it's the, the And it's it's just it's what <laughs> it's what just one of my problems where it's just if they just had a little bit more fun with it, with the concept. You know, and like made it like an '80s. I mean, they don't know they're making an '80s movie at the. You know, <laughs> they're like in a, the '80s. They don't the, know they're the making. The quote, There's a term called movies. campiness. We have yeah, to add that. it might be kind of more fun to be honest. And I don't know. Like, and I don't know. That's just my opinion. I know. I agree. I don't think. I don't believe. It's where this movie is not good for me. Is where yeah. is the the. I don't think the acting's very good. A lot yeah. of the acting, honestly, isn't in general. Except for this whole movie. Some of the moments with some of the moments with Patrick Swayze is, like I, you said earlier. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is one of those moments where this is the problem with the emotion where they do look like they've just got fake tears that it's sprayed really on bad. them. <laughs> it's like they've really shining the light on them so they show it and then it's just like 
Ah. He's like, I was hard on you boys. He's like, yeah, you, we love you, Dad, and everything. And then all of a sudden, and then I, I know you do, and I love you too. And he's just, you see Robert, he's just like, where's my dad at? <laughs> <laughs> It's just like, we're having a moment. I don't know, son. We're having a moment. <laughs> Have you seen my dad? Where's my dad? <laughs> Damn it, Robert. You just drank deer blood. <laughs> you're out of your mind. You you're out of your element. You're going to find a toilet. <laughs> yeah. Where's the bathroom, Mr. <laughs> Dude, but <laughs> one, of the co- one of the cool things I do like about this movie, because as the first time I watched this, I'm going, what the fuck is going on? Like, why, why, did, why are these people here? Oh, now they're they're speaking Spanish. Like, what the fuck is going on? I, I thought this was Russia. Yeah, and, and it's cool because we learn. The thing I love is that we learn about this movie like they do. We yeah. were, like with with these passing stories of this is what's happening. We we're up at the cabin now with um, Mr. Mason, and we're learning Ben Johnson. Yeah, we're learning like these kids are, like these actors are, and I right. think that's super cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, because again, I agree with you. again, back in the day, you rented this movie or you went in the theater, you had to sit through the whole thing. Yeah, where yeah. if this were like Netflix, you might be like, I don't even fucking, I'm moving on to the next thing. Yeah. Right. So, so that that I thought was a really cool thing. I agree with you because, and and like I was saying earlier, or you see like those little snippets um, when they get to the supply shop and see Robert's dad, and they say, he's like, I don't know, some of them were speaking Spanish, you know. And but we saw Russians, yeah. you know, pretty clearly, and they were speaking uh, Russian when they parachuted in. And then you start seeing like some of the, you know, communist troops, essentially. So they're <laughs> obviously all working. And the explanation from Mr. Mason is also kind of another jarring. Yeah. Like it's how is how is it so jarring and so casual? <laughs> you know what I mean? You guys are 40 miles behind enemy lines. How do you think about that? Yeah. Here's Isn't that kind of fun? And, <laughs> Here you go, and and yeah, here's 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 some soup. Here's some <laughs> oh, and here's a bottle of Cedar Ridge. Yeah, keep you yeah. Warm at night. He's like, yeah, this will keep you warm. By the way, it doesn't. Okay, it gives false <laughs> warmth. Yeah. All right, very bad decision on his part, and also uh, <laughs> another bad decision on his part potentially. Um, hey, group of. Uh, boys, yeah. here are my two daughters. My precious heirlooms. My precious heirlooms. My objects, yeah. according to... Is it their dad? It's, it's grandpa. grandpa. It's grandpa. Okay. Yeah. yeah is here's he basically like, I need you, sorry girls, I need you to continue on the family lineage. <laughs> is that essentially what he was doing? Yeah, he's, he's, he's basically saying, uh, excuse me, Lord of the Flies, would you mind taking <laughs> yeah. my, my daughters, my granddaughters? <laughs> but dude, here's the <laughs> fucked up part. Why... They they come back to this place later in the movie and they've decorated for Christmas and it's just this beautiful home. That's Why right. the fuck did they send their daughters out into nothing? Yeah, true. <laughs> they, they, they're just like, come on in, we're listening to Christmas. I music. was thinking, I was thinking maybe it's like a Hans Landa kind of thing in, in Glorious Bastards, like where they get like checked up on, uh, yeah, maybe yeah, 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 for yeah. like. If oh, story, that's a good point. Okay, like, I, I don't it. know if they want their daughters or their because you know, they're not seen as the the grandparents aren't seen as a threat, right. so they're just letting them stay there. And maybe you know they don't want them to be subjected. Subjectified, is that yeah. Sub- Sub- subjectified. Subjected. subjected, subjected, Sub- subsidized, <laughs> yes, uh, subjectified and objectified <laughs> in the same thing. Uh, well, and I like uh, it's either that, okay. O- otherwise, it's Mason sitting out in a rocking chair on his front front porch, going back and forth. With the polishing his polishing his gun, <laughs> and it's just like Russian soldiers drive up, and he's just like, "We don't take too kind of your kind around here," and that's what that's what they got to deal with, like on a like weekly basis or something, like yeah. you say, like the check ins, and maybe he got one, uh, yeah. and. Yeah, he's just because they were hiding. Yeah, you're right. Ma- well, and they're com- if it's communist, then he's like, "Well, this is private land. Get off." I don't know how it works. No, I don't know anything about communism. There's no rules yet. No cell phones. No, either. no rules. Internet gotcha. gone. Facebook not there. Yeah, um, I don't know how they communicated. Did you guys have subtitles? Yeah, <laughs> I did. Yeah, uh, not a couple watches. Okay, I the version I watched, I didn't have any subtitles. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so maybe you guys have uh, some insight on like. What people were saying when I didn't understand <laughs> any of, because there was like oh, the, the beginning scene where they're like in the town and at night and they're having a battle. I'm like, oh, they're speaking a different language, and like the Cuban and stuff like that. I'm like, it wasn't that wait, long of a wait, scene. Wait, are you kidding me? Like there wait, was you didn't nothing. Even have. I had nothing. 
Oh, wow. Because the, the real version tells you what they're saying yes. in Spanish. That's Russian. what I thought. <laughs> and so, but like, I hadn't watched this movie in a while. So I'm watching the beginning. I'm like, oh, well, it's just a short scene. I'm sure like we just are supposed <laughs> to like be left Im- ambiguous yeah. or something. <laughs> but then later on, there's a whole like three scene arc wow. of like yeah. the commanders. There's some important stuff going like, on there. I'm, s- I'm pretty certain I'm supposed to understand this. <laughs> I, I like that you're just kind of sitting there almost like with like ready to take notes and just like. <laughs> yeah. Pulls out his Google <laughs> Google Translate so, on his phone. <laughs> okay, well, I guess, though, I guess just, we're just not going to go back. We're the, not going to go back. I to hope that. the boys have something because I, I I don't understand. Yeah, <laughs> I was very surprised to see Leah Thompson uh, because yeah. think about it. One year, this is one year before she's Lorraine Baines in right. yeah. Back to the Future, and she looks looks and acts nothing like not it's at like all. a completely different person mm-hmm. from yeah. from this movie to that movie. Yeah, it se- seems completely different in ages in in the look of her. And I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just a testament to wardrobe and to her acting. Yeah, because it's not the same person in it my world. Yeah. Gave me a whole new appreciation for her because yeah. really all I knew her from was Back to the Future yep. for the longest time. Dennis the Menace's mom. Of course. Yeah. 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 I'm, I think I'm ready for Punchable Face if you guys are. OK. Oh, boy. OK. I should. Sh- Okay, go. Are, yeah. we, are we sure? Let's just do it. Okay. Hit it! If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's the sound bite. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to go for it. <laughs> Lane Smith, Mayor Bates. Oh. Oh, 100%. The coach, coach for the fucking Hawks in the yeah. Mighty Ducks. Yeah. And uh, the lawyer, lawyer, my cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny. Yes. He is, does he always just play the fucking sniveling? Like, mm. It seems like it, man. Doesn't it seem that way? Yeah. yeah Wasn't he I'm the dad board. and son of law, son in law, too? Oh, I think you're, you're right. right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm just, I was thinking about a way to like tie in him. Like, after this is over, he goes to, he moves to Minnesota to get away because his son <laughs> died and he still <laughs> wants to coach hockey and be around young kids. And I'm like, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to punch him. Punchable face for me. If there the, are some good ones, but I think that's my punchable face. So I'm with you. The problem is, and the reason why I might let this just overrule is my my <laughs> vote for it was because I can't even think of his name. That's why. But it's the guy Brachenko. Is it Brachenko? The, the old Russian guy with the big ears. No, the guy who comes in late in the movie. No. No, the okay, guy, the short the guy, the short guy, Brachenko with the hat. Yeah. the The guy that comes in the yeah. end, his name is. Fart uh, Stevens. Fart, fart, <laughs> fart McAllister. Yeah, I mean, I we could probably okay. just say all of the Russians have punchable faces. <laughs> well, yeah. so that <laughs> that was definitely the guy for me who's most punchable because he's just the most like little rat faced dude that just like, well, I'm just here to critique everything. <laughs> yeah, when with, he walks with, in on the parade. Yeah, yeah, he's right. like, well, oh, this parade's not too good. You need your barriers back a little further. Yep. And you know everything he was doing is only critiquing. Yeah, I didn't know what, what else is going on. <laughs> at all. There you go, <laughs> just and, pointing and, and yelling. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all you need to know. That's okay, all you cool. need to know, man. So if but if we're talking Lane Smith, then that's fine. Okay. I'm, I'm good with Lane. Just because yeah. sniveling man. Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. at being a dick. And apparently his I, son is the same. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. Oh no, he's he's more of a politician like <laughs> me. You know, he's not really. He really was. Yeah. Oof. So the next day, the group sees a Russian patrol of three soldiers and kills them all. In reprisal, Colonel Bella orders the killing of several of the town's residents. Matt witnesses from a distance. Among those killed are his and Aardvark's fathers. No. In retaliation, the teens continue their guerrilla campaign, dubbing themselves Wolverines after their high school football team's mascot. They ambush multiple Soviet and Cuban patrols on different occasions. This is probably my favorite scene of the movie, to be honest. This this patrol scene the, of the three, uh, like tourists, basically tourist Russians, kind of like. Yeah. And I didn't know what they were saying too, so I was just like, "Yeah, they're just saying tourist stuff." <laughs> oh, so, wait, so okay. Wait, so oh this my is, god, we need to talk about this. We then, need to dude. talk about this. Okay. This is this is really important okay. because because Sean, as, uh, you're not qualified to sit at this table. You're right not. <laughs> you're not. Jeremy, did you watch this at all? <laughs> 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 this is very important. Actually, let Sean Sean finish your your statement on this scene, yeah, and please. then we'll we'll explain to you what happens. Well, so I mean, basically, they're you know out there taking pictures. Like this is a cool national forest that we're that we're looking at, and uh, then they just spot the the girl. Yeah. The and then they get ambushed, and then they all die. Yeah. I have to say, like the pictures that they're taking of each other. I, I can envision this in some sort of black and white, like showing up in some sort of history book that these pictures are taken, yeah. the way that they're standing and the way he, <laughs> he poses with his gun and everything. Moments before they die. But, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Faces of death. Faces. <laughs> but... But the fact that you didn't you didn't catch his spiel of like reading the sign 
I, I figured he was. I mean, I could read the, the English on the sign, but but he but he so couldn't. He, so he <laughs> okay. says he basically is like they're like, look, a monument. And it has writing on it. Yeah. And he basically goes, oh, I know how to read English. And you knew he, how to read it. Go read it. And read he it. reads the whole thing, but it's wrong. Like, okay. He basically is just making up stereotypes. He's like, here, a great battle of American Indians uh, and Teddy Roosevelt yes. defeated the Indians. But he was using the numbers, but, yeah. he, but they were wrong. But they were wrong. <laughs> they were slightly wrong. He'd say like 34,000 <laughs> instead of 35,000. Yeah. 1906 instead of 1908. It, it was I I I thought it was awesome. I just think a it, weird little detail. And that was it's very funny because they're also kind of almost making fun of him along the way sure. too. He's 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 like, yeah, you know it. Yeah, you studied. Yeah, you he's go ahead. Go ahead. Group. You you read it. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what it says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, and then he says, oh, great battle here. One of the greatest battles in American history yeah. of the Great Plains and la, la, la. And then they just it like, does say oh. Great Plains on there. So yeah. he gets certain words right, but not the whole thing. And I think <laughs> that's why it's so it's so funny, but it's so it's also very smart. Yeah. You know, and then then they say that, that again after that, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> OK. And then they try to take pictures with each other. And he's literally telling him, "Was like, hurry up, you idiot! Like, take the picture. I'm tired of standing like that kind of thing." But well, th this scene, this scene is so incredible to me because it does what we fucking do on this show. It's humanizing the goons yeah. without us even this is what we would make up like we'd be like all right i'd like to envision you know the russians get a day off yeah you know so they go up so they go up to the mountains and yeah. they got their cameras and they want to take photos from when they go back home it does this that's it what really it does. does yeah that's true the, these movies would if this were a true like pro-america patriot the, none of this shit would happen they right. would have just gotten ambushed. Yeah, there wouldn't have, they wouldn't have spent time on this, and that's why I love this scene. This is one of the best scenes I think, most important scenes of the movie. I think it's my it, it favorite is very scene important. for sure. And you know, I'll I'll spend my Patreon money somewhere good instead of ripping this off of where I ripped it off of, so I can get some subtitles in my life. But um, I this you're right. It's it's it does humanize him, and I think that. Like people came after John Milius for this movie, just being like, "You're such a war mongerer." Yeah. And he's like, "No, this is an anti-war movie. This is I don't yeah. I don't want Clearly. this. I really don't want this." And it this really does humanize them, and it, that's what makes it more heartbreaking to me, because you can tell, like that they are that that there's a point where the Russians are like, "Oh, I think we're outnumbered in this," and it, you know, and they get scared. Yeah. And um, there's no music during this scene. It is just. And I don't even know if they were ambushing them or if they were just kind of hiding and they they had yeah. pulled up at that moment. They did. Um, it's just an unfortunate like kind of what it seems to be like a war thing because you can't let them go. You can't no. let that guy get on the radio and, and, and say anything because you're going to be dead after that. And this you know? starts their, basically, their yeah. Wolverine revolution at this exactly. point. They can't turn back. Yeah. It's a really cool scene. And I, I just the scene after this, too, where that the, we're at the, the campfire – and Charlie Sheen's next to Leah Thompson, I believe. And she's like, I'm not doing your fucking dishes or whatever. And he's like, well, why aren't you doing my... I thought you loved doing my dishes. You're a girl. Uh, it's <laughs> like fucking shitty. But it's funny because the girls are the ones that killed a like a colonel. Or like a yeah, major, no yeah. like the captain of that group, you know. Yeah, and it's like Jennifer there's Grey, like is runs all the most dangerous missions. She does. Yeah, she the like, movie. The, like all the infiltration. Jennifer yeah. Grey's yeah. the one that like capped the captain on the ground or yeah. whatever, and it took like four or five of the dudes to shoot that one guy, and he also got away to his truck. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do you, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, I'm not doing dishes. I'm the most qualified one here to kill Russians. Yeah, not to beat a dead horse on it, but it was it's that I think this is the first point. Where the idea of John Milius coming through that this this is supposed to portray that war is pointless, you know? Yeah, it's yeah, futile. Yeah. It's futile, you know. And it's a it's a running theme that we'll get to probably more as we continue on through, right? And it it again the humanization in a very sad way yeah. is when that last guy gets yeah. to the car. And he's trying to say he's just he's asking for God. He's not asking for anybody else. And Patrick Swayze comes up. So the and the gun that he uses uh, is what I'm going to take as my item. Okay. It's a Colt Peacemaker. Hold on a second. <laughs> Ooh, here's a prop. <laughs> what do you got? The Colt Peacemaker. Uh, it's Jed's gun that he was passed down from his grandfather. Yep. And uh, but the the 
researching that, it seemed that that gun is a single action uh, revolver that you have to cock it every single time you shoot that gun. One of those. You, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why you know we'll we'll talk about it later. Um, you kind of see in westerns him, like Cool Hand Luke. And yeah, stuff. yeah, like Cool Hand Luke, where they got it. You know, they're basically firing their gun for sure, kicking the hammer with their other hand. You have to cock it every single time. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so the idea is that he sees him. They look each other in the eye, and he consciously pulls back that hammer, and has to and and then and has shoots to let go of it. and yeah. has to let go of it. And that again, you feel for that guy in that moment mm-hmm. that you're like, this is it. Oh man. So it's it's a very very uh, intense scene. Very heartbreaking, uh, intense prop segment. Uh, I love it. I'm gonna take the Star Wars hat. Perfect. There <laughs> we go, <laughs> baby. There we go. All right, then I'm going to complete the wardrobe. I want the Wolverine Letterman jacket. Yeah, the Letterman jacket. One. When Hell they're playing football yeah. later. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yep. There, there is more humanization, too, of the Russians, too, when when the, when the Jennifer Grey's character gets <clears> up and, <throat> and drops a bomb off inside of that building. Sure. Yes. And, like, the Russian guy's dying on the street, and the other guy's, like, calling for help. Like, this is yeah. my friend, and you're, hey, what? Yeah. I mean, like, they don't, show, they don't show that in... In mm-hmm. typical wartime movies, they're not going to show that other end of that. And the, like the the Russian guys, they're just there. He's like, yeah, bring your friend. Yeah, like, hey, hey, hey you want to bring your friend? Like, I'm he's... stuck here, so like yeah. maybe we can meet and fall in love. You know, like, yeah. They're they're not like the goons you want to portray them. And, and I think it's unfortunate if you want to tie this into like modern day times. Like this movie is very relevant because this is what's happening in Ukraine. Yeah. And like you you do have to feel some w- war is bad anyone that participates in it is not good like you don't it's, it's want, not a good thing it's not a good thing of. you don't want to kill people but, i mean but like most of these people are forced into doing it mm-hmm. and i'm assuming that it's very similar there's probably some russians in ukraine they're like what the fuck are we doing here yeah. this sucks did yeah. you did you guys see that some of the russian tanks that have been destroyed in ukraine have wolverines i saw them? that oh really yes in homage and to this it's yeah. been wow. gaining some steam because somebody found a photo of an over destroyed russian tank a couple months ago and wolverines was painted on the side of it that's wow. right like i guess ukraine has been sort of rallying around this notion of like we can do this yeah, yeah. from that movie remember this, like, this that's is our crazy this is our greatest export to yeah. the world is our culture <laughs> right yes. it's, it's what we got that's all we got we can do movies movies pretty well oh yeah. man it's crazy yeah so you get the heartbreaking scene obviously where the, all those guys get fucking assassinated you, in the mass grave. You would have to kill me fucking 10 billion times over before I fucking yep. stood there and took that bullshit. I agree. That pissed me off so bad. And yeah. I, like, I've obviously never been in that position, never want to be in that position. I have all yeah. the sympathy in the world for people who have been in that position. But it is just like I would go down fighting. I don't care. You'd have to fucking kill me, take me off of somebody to even put me in, like, a firing even dig my, like there's a guy digging his own grave. Yeah. I'm like absolutely fucking nope. not. No, no, Have no. Someone no. else dig my grave because I'm dead. Yeah, I am not doing that. It it would well, just that shit enraged me. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's extremely frustrating. It is it is unfortunately like one of those oh, man. It's another one of those truths that you know has happened uh, in the world and uh, you know past whatever. Um, but it is it's incredible what they what they've probably already been put through at this point. You got to think uh, sure. months, a couple of months now that they've been in this re-education camp. They're probably hungry as fuck. Hungry. You know, you're trying to do what you can. And, and I again, feel like they weren't told they were going to die. I feel like, yeah, no, like go stand not. over there. That's, uh, I think yeah. they realized yeah, it at a yes. certain point Which when, when they, they started, started singing. singing. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't have sang that. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't have sang the national anthem. I would have sang our other national anthem, which is "Fuck you." I'm not fucking taking this <laughs> shit. Like, yeah, like "Fuck you." I won't do yeah. what you tell. Me. Yeah, we we just you just crank up the rage. Yeah, uh, rage against it, the shame. It really pissed me off. Their dad, their <laughs> dad, dad was like, that. he he kind of gave the look. He's like, I'm not singing this song. But yeah. I know I'm gonna die. So whatever. Uh, I okay. So and I'm going to say this right now. And I started to kind of crack up when they start singing. <laughs> because it's just like, oh, say, can you say it? Or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Oh, you guys couldn't have. Beautiful I'm just trying to harmonize. Yeah. Maybe you guys didn't know this was coming, but maybe you guys could have practiced this a little yeah. bit before this happened. Like, you just get together. Like, I mean, you got time. Just some like, of you guys kind of get your notes together. Get, Mark's get, dad get, was get the your, start. Get yeah. your tenors. And, and some, your some of you guys are were definitely in the you know the church choir. <laughs> I mean, come on, Jesus. Please put it together. Uh, <laughs> Hello. No, it, but like when That's they great. start kind of cracking through their voices and everything, and it, it's like again, like 
it's not that I'm trying to like laugh at the situation. It's just the audio they used for it is <laughs> was kind of comical. No, I feel you. So, so this again is where it just seems like they could have spent some more time on character development. Instead, we get about. 20 to 30 straight minutes of just bat battle after battle after yeah. battle which of course is important but it's just like the same thing it's just like oh now we're here now we're on this cliff and we're getting these guys and then we're going to have some explosions and then now we're going to be over here on the in this area and it we're going to have some explosions it does get a little repetitive it yeah. does right uh, it it it's a about a two-hour movie, like hour fifty. Yeah, something. it is. Um, it gets up there, and it is kind of scene after scene of just kind of them doing that. And there's some reckless, like recklessness there. Like when they're on the cliffs, they're just shooting at essentially the same direction of where their parents' family. Yeah, exactly. Firing, and then they're just throwing grenades. They throw grenades. I'm like, that's a real easy miss there, bro. <laughs> even even the the first like ambush thing that we talked about earlier. They're like in the forest shooting at one guy, and then Jed goes up and is like, like just shooting his, like his six Mem- gun into that guy, and then another guy behind him <laughs> is also shooting. I imagine in his in his general area. I'm like, dude. Remember earlier yeah. in the movie when they're like, "Don't shoot twice." They shoot forty seven times. Shooting Same a lot. small, miss small, <laughs> yeah. man. Let's try, baby. Did you recognize Judd Omen? So he's the Nicaragua captain. Uh, his his no. at, his real name is Judd Omen. He's the he's the captain with the fucking jawline of the century. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. That is Mickey in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. No oh. way. Remember the 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 felon? Oh in, oh in, yeah. He, j- just look at look look up Pee Wee's mm, Big Adventure. Yeah. And like, cause he, I don't think he was a very terribly famous person sure. back in the day. He did have a nice IMDb, but I saw him right. I was like, oh, it's Mickey. <laughs> Jawline of the century. On that guy. Yeah. Jesus Christ. That's like yeah. one of their like guerrilla attacks. Uh, is the the tank pulls up to the gas station. Yeah. And oh, yeah. It's just it's just got to be like as a as a gas station attendant. So diesel or he did kind of go tank. I don't know. I don't know I what don't, you got. I don't know what we're going to do here. We're doing but, okay. EC5. I don't know what we're doing. I heard there was a, a deleted scene that had them pulling up to a McDonald's. I yeah. did, yeah. In a tank. Oh, that's right. Kind of. I kind of liked that of just this normal-looking gas station with a Coors banquet sign in the background, and here comes a Russian tank. Yeah. I almost wanted that Coors sign, but I, I decided to go with the piece. Sorry, maker, man. So. There, was, there was also, like, even just, like, having all this, like, Russian artillery tanks and everything like that on – on American soil, they saw like a convoy of it going by, and the, and the CIA got alerted and went out and checked on them. Like, what's going on here? What the fuck is actually going on? And like, it's a movie. It's a movie. It's like, okay, okay, Are cool. You sure. <laughs> All right, um, but we're gonna stick around just to make sure. Need yeah. any parts that's filled? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, scene four. A month later, Erica sees a pilot land nearby by parachute. The pilot is Air Force Colonel Andy Tanner, who joins the team and fills them in on the events of the war. The team invites the colonel to join their guerrilla efforts. They attack an airbase located near the re-education camp and free the prisoners. Tanner decides to show the Wolverines the way out of the occupied territory. While getting caught in a tank battle, Aardvark and Tanner are killed. Powers Booth, dudes. Powers, Powers Booth. Booth. Uh, I'm going to tell you, as a person who <clears throat> I never like to look up, in this case, I didn't look up anything about this movie. I just hit play on it, right? Yeah. So I don't know who, I know Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen. I know nothing else. Like I said, Leah Thompson, holy fuck. Who is that? Who is that? Yeah. Who? Why do I know that guy? I mean, I'm sitting here for the, for the next 20 minutes going, man, <laughs> who is that guy? Does all of Powers Booth power revolve around his mustache? Absolutely. Because that mustache is gone and he's a, a different person. Yep. I'm thinking, what, Curly Bill and Tombstone, mm-hmm. Cy Tolliver and Deadwood. Yep. That's right. He is a different person without that mustache. I forget his name, but uh, Extreme Prejudice is a Nick Nolte movie I fucking love, oh, mm-hmm. by Walter Hill. He's so good in that. He might be demustached in that. Not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know, man. Sin I City. He was in Sin, Sin City. City. That's uh, correct. Yeah. yeah. He is a great fucking, the greatest actor in this movie. I, I agree. I think oh, his, he's yeah. the best part in this movie. Absolutely. Um, there, what do you... Are we too like him and Leah Thompson? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean we're yeah. here. It's it's a weird thing. I don't understand it. It's a it's a weird thing to sort of even have in the movie because there was more to it and they f- they shot it. There's sup- a supposedly a love scene between uh, Powers Booth and Leah Thompson's characters. Yeah, uh, and didn't, didn't like test audiences say yeah. Test that's not cool. They didn't like the age gap and everything like that, and uh, aptly so, I guess. That's kind of gross, but. Leah Thompson, she said the the whole reason she wanted this part is because of that love scene. 
like she was like super into that into powers booth or into the idea of just this the part I- being in the movie just the idea of it being in the movie and i it it was my least favorite part of the movie. It's I'm like, just, what is this? It's it's so it's such a weird like kid thing. Like she, and she like gets flowers like, <laughs> and that, well, like, scurries off. Now let's fuck again. <laughs> like right, Jesus. It's kind of like, Jesus. The reason I think the, the the way I can think of it, or the reason I do, I think that she might have wanted that is because I think it, I think it's more character development for her. It's more sure. her her she's growing up, growing up and becoming you know making her own decisions, that kind of a thing. And you're right, but but beforehand it seems very childish the way she she acts with him yeah right but there are there are five six other dudes her age that are yeah that I'm they could grow up together and about he's that? like <laughs> he's like fr- what he's fresh he's, out of his his family mm. like is still there i guess yeah. right i mean yeah. it's pretty pretty i don't know yeah, i i no. guess it can't, can't you can't decide who world yeah. war three will make you do weird things <laughs> i guess <laughs> 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 there there was some stuff about powers booth um so apparently his character was originally written as a proud military man who was also anti-war and served as the movie's voice of reason. Booth was less than thrilled when the character was made into a less complex, more conventional warrior. So you can you can feel those hints of this, like, I'm a smart man, I don't think war is great, but I've been in it, yeah. and I know what I'm doing. You got those hints, but it does it doesn't last long. Like when he even when he says all that hate's gonna burn you up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It keeps me warm. Keeps you warm. Though those are the hints that I think Powers Booth wanted more of. He wanted to be the man that came in and, and helped affect these kids. Yeah. To be yeah. like, You're going off the deep end here, boys. Because the like their first amb- it's like Jed is showing him like what they can do. You know? It's like yeah. showing him like his new car pretty much. She's like, oh, check this out. Watch the claymores in the trees, you know. Like, and then Je- you can see, uh, uh, what's his name? Sorry, uh, Tanner. Power Tanner. Yep. Tanner. Tanner. Uh, his reaction is like, oh, yeah, you guys are. I guess you're good at killing. That's yeah. it. That's Mom good would be for proud. you. You know. Yeah. It. It. I can definitely see that, and I that would have been a lot more interesting. I think. Yeah. Right. I mean, that was the aspect. I think what he really wanted in the original script, but yeah. And and yeah. And again, when he's walking away, and Danny Danny looks up, the youngest, I think of. Really, everyone there is like, "Are we doing good?" Because he doesn't know, yeah. and he just doesn't even say anything. You know, he just he yeah. just like walks away. Tanner True. just walks away from him. He's like, "I don't know if you're doing good. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell you if you're doing good or bad." You know? Yeah. Um, how do you how do you how do you justify it one way or the other? Right. Right. So yeah, I also found the football scene to be a little weird. <coughs> like basically, they all said, "Hey, we're all going to take the day off. Everybody, go to your closets and change into your." Your regular <laughs> regular wear, get rid of those old smelly m- clothes and put on what we would have normally worn in yeah. normal life. It was just a weird. It just felt out of touch. I like the idea of them like letting off some steam and being kids again, For but sure. also like, where where would you have the time to do that? Yeah, or the energy, I guess. When it's it's such a weird thing too because this character is such short lived. It just seems so pointless in at that yeah. point. Like and I guess like in in the aspect of him being anti war, his original character, he, what he wanted it to be, is more of the art film that it could have been because that would have been interesting to think about at the end. I w- I guess. Yeah. But then it's just like he just kind of bites the dust and he's, he's just gone and like no one ever learned anything <laughs> from him. Not like no. nothing ever changed. This is where I start to feel like a little um, let down by the storytelling at this point, and it's it's. I feel like I'm not learning. I feel like I'm feeling like I'm missing out on crucial pieces of information because their conversations are quiet or they're not direct enough or they don't they don't utilize um, a single shot of a person talking to another person. You know, it doesn't it doesn't deliberately tell you, hey, you need to listen to this person mm-hmm. because you see him, right? You're kind of watching everybody else, and again, I think that maybe that's part of it. But it, at this point, when he's ta- talking about crucial things and the idea that they are, get f- he is trying to find, show them the way out. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't catch that for a no. long time that they're on. They're, they're trying to get. I only out. caught that in writing the scenes. F- yeah. for this and, f- and finding a synopsis. You don't think of it that way. Like you just think because you've seen them just so much of just. Battle, battle, battling, battle. battling, yeah, battling, battling. Yeah, yeah. You just think it's another battle, but it's gone wrong this time. Yeah. So that's that's again, it's just kind of one of my letdowns, I guess, for the, some of the storytelling. Even even the three times I watched this movie, where I s- sat there with volume as loud as I could and tried to pay attention, no phone, no nothing. When he's explaining 
and he's pointing with the stick on the grill and saying, "This happened. Well, this happened." He's pointing a stick with a f- like a fire going. He's like, yeah. "Where are you pointing?" Yeah, right, well, you are a bad general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> supposed to draw it in the sand, dude. You <laughs> do <on>. not. Uh, <laughs> no, I still have no clue what happened and how this war happened. Yeah, I listened yeah. to him three times explain. Oh, they came in from here, and then they did this, and then they nuclear. Ta- I'm still like, I'm not following you. Yeah, I it, don't understand. That's where the writing let me down in this movie. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's really hard to catch. And this is again, this is the you know, oh, they came up through Mexico. This is where they kind of put their first offensive, and then they also targeted specific areas throughout the country, bases, blah blah blah. And then he, and then they say, they say, um, you know, who's our allies? And he says, he says. About six hundred thousand Chinamen. By the way, per- Chinamen is not the preferred name. <laughs> <place to it. laughs> Asian American. Asian American. Uh, but but no. can't get away from it. But he said, "I know <laughs> it's, it's too it's too fresh. It's too good." Um, but <laughs> but he says, "Well, he's like, I thought it was a billion." And he's like, "Yeah, it was." And he throws that on, and that's your hint at nuclear war. Yeah, that that Russia attacked China. With nuclear weapons, right. at Whiskey that doesn't point, burn up in a fire. By N- the way. Oh, okay. Oh, so well, that's good to know. You know that. It is. It is just. <laughs> a, it's just a weird thing because this movie, like, it's it, they wanted it to be like a teen Rambo kind of thing, and like, it, you can see that in there, especially with all the characters that we have and all the actors, especially playing those characters. But then you have John Milius's like love of war movies which are very talky Mm -hmm. and like very strategic you know it's not just battle scenes it's the movie's trying to be both and Mm -hmm. i don't i don't think that it works yeah uh ultimately to be honest and i I guess i'm getting to the end i guess let's see if the final scene actually makes you feel a little differently there so a soviet special forces team moves into the mountains but the wolverines kill them they find a tracking device which reveals that daryl is the traitor and the team executes him the Wolverines begin falling apart. Tony and Robert are killed during a helicopter attack. Jed and Matt prepare a suicidal attack on the Soviet headquarters in Calumet. During the climactic final battle, the boys kill many Soviet soldiers but are fatally wounded themselves and die together on a park bench. Bella resigns from his position. Erica and Di- Danny survive, and the war eventually ends. I'm absolutely loving the, my favorite part of this movie is when the the new Soviet guy comes to town in his parade, you know, yeah. your, your most punchable face. <laughs> yeah, and they get in the room, which, by the way, r- Sean in this room, he's okay. speaking in Russian. Yep, and he's saying it's kind of an important thing. He's saying you this shouldn't. Is, this is the whole scene where I'm like, I should probably yeah. have subtitles. He's on. basically saying that we shouldn't retaliate to the people of the town for for the, what these kids are doing out there. Like he's yeah. calling this the worst move they ever made, and okay. that we need to we need to not do anything in retaliation anymore. We need to just go find those kids and kill them. Yep. But my favorite part is Colonel Bella just throwing major shade. He's got his sunglasses on in the yeah. meeting. Oh, yeah. He's wearing his, like, 80s fucking <laughs> yeah. flock of seagull sunglasses, just rolling his eyes in the background. I don't understand it because Colonel Bella is sort of our guy who, like, is here. He's always in the background going, this isn't right. Like, I've been on yeah. both sides of this. But yet, here comes this Soviet Special Forces guy being like, hey, let's stop killing innocent people. And he's like... <sighs> I, I, it's just I well, love the way he looks, Corey Harton in the meeting there. But yeah, at the same yeah. time, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't understand why he's wearing sunglasses and why he's so mad. There are points there. There are points uh, earlier in the conversations between him and the other uh, Russian guy yeah. that he he is kind of denouncing, um, targeting the other civilians and or executing and doing that stuff. It's a lot of that other guy, that other short, shifty yeah. Russian guy. Who who is um, pushing for that? Yeah. and making those calls. And so is th- he mad that nobody listened to him? I think so. I think I that's said wh- that. I think that's what it is. Okay, that's exactly. Okay, what that I think makes it sense. Is. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I've been saying this the whole time, but you know, it's, it, we've been doing it wrong, but you know, this is what it is. Yeah, that was pretty. I, I got to admit though that this was pretty <laughs> intense when uh, Robert kills uh daryl it's a pretty this is the other scene that stuck with me when i first watched this movie besides the kid hanging out the window i'm like but that's his friend yeah like what's going on and so apparently he they got to him while he was in town he just snuck out and went to town and i i'm guessing he went to his dad who's the mayor right and was like dad i'm so sorry and he and the the mayor's like well of course son we're gonna protect you but you have to swallow this tracking device okay dad i'll do whatever i mean those guys are both 
the worst characters in this. I mean, they're just oh, follow the flow. As long as nobody kills us, we can right. kill other people. It's it's a shitty D- Daryl from the start is a pretty unlikable kid, and yeah. this is this he he does this. I mean, he makes this decision. It, it is tough. It's because it's tough because he's he does fall in line, if you will. You know, he is a part of the group. Mm-hmm. He is he is participating um, at this point. And then he's like, "Well, they made me swallow it." And so then I'm just sitting there thinking, "Like, let's we'll shit it out." <laughs> <laughs> it was yesterday. Like, yeah, it's like it's gonna. It's gonna probably take a little time, and it might hurt a little bit. Just pass it. Drink some deer blood. <laughs> just, yeah, just drink a little bit more deer blood. It'll you get know, you. you know get how, your guts going. How great! How how <laughs> how much of a flow you had when you drank that? Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, I think. I, I think that's the best. That would have been even better than you know killing the Russian you captured and everything. Is that you just left a big old steaming pile <laughs> with your tracker <laughs> in it? <laughs> it's just like, oh dang it, they got us again. It's right around this corner, sir. He, he, called, the sh- he called the shit poof. <laughs> this is what I. Th- this is why I think we are the best podcast ever. Because there ain't nobody who reviewed Red Dawn and ever came to that conclusion. Yeah. AJ, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome, guys. Well, I just think too. You. Like, did you get? Well, speaking of poop and butts and stuff, did you guys? <laughs> was there was there a line or, uh, like when they're talking about the the other Russian that they have captured? Was there a line that you guys heard where someone said "rub a butt on him"? Yeah, like a like a cigarette. Oh, I thought like they a were dart. Talking about smoking like smoking a dart, uh, no. <laughs> taking their pants down <laughs> yeah. and rubbing their butts on him. Just, I mean, just, maybe just <laughs> just Mel Gibsoning him and just sharding all over the guy. Why, don't, why wouldn't you say rub a cigarette butt on? Yeah. Oh, that's just not what you do. You know, <laughs> it's called. You don't do that you anyway. See, like, you see Leah Thompson just with a dart hanging out of her mouth. They're like, somebody's got one. Just fucking. Yeah. <laughs> just rub it on his face. Rub a butt on. Him. <laughs> rub a butt on him. <laughs> No, well, I, I think th- I think they had to kill him. They should be. They had to. They it had sh- to. <laughs> they need. That's when you need. That's, oh, sorry. You want to throw a joke? <laughs> no, in I was just gonna say. Go should ahead. be Robert since he's got he's got the shitty butt from all the blood. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> no. They, they. That's why if you're talking about a group of people that are doing this, that are living in a time like this, you got to have a Robert. You have to have yeah. a Robert, the guy that's just fucking off his hinges. Is yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Who has a problem with authority and leadership and thinks that his way is the highway and then eventually fucks everything else yeah. up. So he's, if you fuck it up, you got to go, man. And like, every, yeah, it's yeah. sad, but it's you're done. Sorry. <laughs> and everything falls apart. Obviously, then now we got a helicopter attack. Robert dies. Yeah. Uh, Tony dies, with, goes out in a blaze of glory, at least yep. with that grenade, which I thought was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was, it was good. <laughs> That's like that was like Moondock Saints, like. The Russian's like, did we get everybody? Yeah, we got everybody. Explosion goes off. He goes, oh, it's <laughs> nine. Oh. I forgot about that <laughs> one. Nine. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he does. He goes, uh-huh. It's yeah. 100%. What about that one? He's like, yeah, he's <laughs> like, oh, that's weird. I only counted one. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, what it's, are you talking it's about? It's the best Wolverines in the movie, though. It's, it is his like last stand yeah. against two fucking helicopters. It's really cool. Just yeah. his, his whole arc is actually kind of cool. It's, yeah. it's very simple, but it's... You know, it's it's the movie that I wanted it to be in at this that part, moment. Yeah. yeah, like a a cheesy '80s kind of f- more fun war movie. I I don't know what I want out of this movie. It was pretty cool because like, did you? Well, first, did you notice that Jed does carve their names into the rock before right. they mm-hmm. leave? Didn't notice that the first couple times, but yeah, he's basically like, "We're gonna die." Yeah, yeah. They've all given up. Their team's falling apart. They're gonna make one last valiant stand. I did really like them going into town. And doing that, and the trains going through, and yeah. we're doing this. But man, it just like it was. I was. I have heard some reviews of people just being like, "This didn't move me." Like the end was pretty moving to me. I yeah. thought. I, I thought just them going to that just abandoned park bench, and everyone's dead. The the soldier, the soldier. Uh, sorry, Bella. Basically, like, fuck this. I'm out. Yeah. It, that was also kind of confusing to me too, where it's just like, so now you have a change of heart. I know he was yeah. kind of building. He was building to throughout it. the entire movie, but it it was just so now you're just gonna lay down your arms with like this. You just they just ambush your whole two guys ambush your whole camp yeah. and pretty much killed eighty guys compared to them. Another helpful point, Sean, was the letter he was writing to the love of his life. Gotcha. <laughs> where he's speaking and and thinking in Spanish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, but he's going through and he is, he's saying, he's like, I don't know why I'm here. It's been so long since I've been warm and in this cold, desolate place. And I think the same thing about Iowa right d- now. Yeah, you're dang right. I don't know why it's still lasting this long in, in April. <laughs> it's still windy. Um, and But he's like 
thinking about her, thinking about being home, thinking about when he was a kid, and that's what kind of comes to light. And that moment of of them uh, sitting on that park bench was was a nice callback or reference to when hey, they were talking to their dad, and they said, "When I used to push you yep. on the swings, I put you on the swings in the park, and you see the swing set and everything." Yeah. Um, but did you hear what Bella says? To the boys as he's walking away when he throws his gun down. I definitely heard it. Did you? Via con Dios. Oh yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh yeah. Wait, wait. So you're saying that <laughs> someone said Via con Dios to Patrick Swayze before he died? I am saying that. Maybe In two he died. different In movies. Two different movies. <laughs> Point Break and Red Dawn. And Red Dawn, baby. Oh my God. By Kundi. So I think Patrick Swayze survived in this movie. Okay. There we go. And okay. uh, went on to just kind of, you know, I wants to like, he kind of gets into Buddhism. Yeah. He wants to be like a, you know, kind of a chill guy and gets into surfing a lot and moves to wherever the hell they're at. Well, his name's Jed, but he's just, he doesn't want to tell people in California that his real name's Jed. Absolutely so he not. So he just, he just kind of goes, you know, I, oh, Bodhisattva. Bodhisattva. Uh, that's and that's cool. why he gets the other guys around him. He's like, I need to have brothers like my yeah, brother. Yeah, exactly. We need, wow. we need a, we need a, yeah. we need a red dawn kind of group. Wow. And, uh, there you go. You know, they just start the uh, life of crime. That's why he fights the establishment. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Well, yeah. what do you think? Anything else you want to talk about this? I don't think so. The only thing is Erica and Danny. Yeah, of course. The Rock. And I do think that the final scene and the, with her final little tag at the end is a, is a pretty good fit, little finish. Uh, I, I don't know. I liked it. I don't know how you guys felt about it. I know that the, the ending like uh, text and everything that said, like, yeah, America won. Is like a as a ta- um, studio thing. Of course, oh. they needed they needed that to like f- for audience. We want yeah, just okay. in case you're wondering, we want. Of uh, course, America's still the great. We're good. America's still the best. Yeah. So uh, just so you guys know, I do. Yeah. Well, that makes sense then because it would have been a much more. I think it would have been just as um, good as just watching them at the end. Yeah. At the end, I didn't. That. I didn't. I didn't think we needed this little like. And we traveled for days, and then we finally <laughs> made it to free America. And now there's a rock. No one visits it anymore, but <laughs> it's still there, and I do too. Remember when I said I was never going to love again? I did. I have it a turns family. Turns out I did. Remember when I said I was never going to forget? I kind of have forgot, but I go back to the rock from time Every to time. Every now and again. <laughs> we vacation there now. It's like <laughs> End movie. Check us out in our army gear. <laughs> <laughs> the score is pretty great. It was yeah, good. I have to say. Okay. Well, yep. what do you think, guys? We've we've dissected it with a modern eye. It is time to talk about our modern day ratings. AJ, what do you got, man? This is a really tough one. Um, it kind of is. It's actually it? it's actually really tough because this is probably one of the most exciting movie introductions. You know, once you really get into it, um, and but I think that there are parts that just really create a lull and a lack of storytelling, and so. Every time I wa- I've watched this, I start to lose interest about, you know, two thirds in, and then I do get kind of brought back. Yeah. So that being said, and wishing for a little bit more substance to it, um, as much as I really do enjoy going and revisiting this movie, I think I'm going to give it. I'm going to give this a six point nine. Here a niner in there, Sean. What do you niner. got, man? Um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm, I'm pretty torn on this of it. Like, I don't know if the movie wants to be like a serious war film or if it wants to be a fun eighties teen Rambo like they wanted. Um, and I'm, I'm still torn because I don't know if that's a, g- a cool thing because there's really no other movie like it yeah, in that except aspect. Except for the sequel. <laughs> the, <laughs> remake. The, the remake. The remake, sorry. We don't talk about that. We won't talk about <laughs> it. Um, Josh but it's, it's just, uh, it, it. Like I said, like I don't know if it, that's a good thing, and I'm still kind of figuring that out in my mind. I think um, because yeah, like I said, there's n- really no other movie that makes me feel like that that we've covered on the show, at least. Uh, I think the performances are okay. Uh, yeah. John Milius is a, a good director. I think the the lighting and like the production design and yeah. uh, 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 just the production overall is is really good. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm a five point nine. 5.9 for Sean. I again, I wanted to love this. I'd never seen it. I watched it the first time and I f- I fucking hated it. Like uh. I was like 
This is dumb. I wanted to give it a slightly above three ninjas score. That's how bad it was. <laughs> wow. But then I watched it again, uh, and some things became clearer to me. I found, I, f- I saw where they were going all of a sudden. I'm like, mm. oh, okay. I, this isn't some rah rah go America film. Uh, otherwise, they would have shown us winning the war. They w- there wouldn't have been this humanizations of the Russians. Colonel Bella Tanner were the voices of reason here, and I loved their characters. War sucks. There are no winners, and yeah. this does not praise anyone as winning this war. Mm-hmm. Everybody loses. So I do really like that aspect. The production. I love how they didn't use any CGI. Yeah, there was like they actually did everything that they they did there. Uh, it feels, it looks good to me. Nothing's cheaply looking. However, I'm not sure I'm like gonna watch this again. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it's oh. just like okay, that was good. So, um, so that's I'm, I'll say six point one for me. Uh, Tyler Dark, uh, his modern day rating. He says, as children, our attention is drawn to the most exciting parts of events, like explosions from mortars and battles we've only witnessed through films. And as adults, those memories still ring clear to some of us today. But we find ourselves struggling to remember the finer details in between. Rewatching this film as an adult, I found myself noticing all the hardships and dire times the Wolverines had faced. They were only teenagers, still in high school, and yet they were thrown into situations worse than they could have ever imagined. Inexperience and being forced into making decisions lead them to horrible consequences they didn't think were possible. The fact that a sudden war theme is still relevant from the day this film was produced to today is disconcerting. Production of the film was well done for the time. Producers made do with what they had for props. Damn it. <laughs> I almost got it. <laughs> and achieved as as close of an accurate representation to the weapons and uniforms as they could. Little fun fact, the Russian machine guns they use are just M60s with rings glued to the barrels to make them look like DH or DSHKs. My modern day review score for Red Dawn is a 7.3 out of 10. I still love this movie. So mm. that takes us a group score of 6.55. And for a modern day score rating, that's a little low on our thing. It is just above Tremors, just below Speed. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I mean, wow. It's right there. It's in those movies where you're like, okay, it's uh. not the not the best film I've ever seen in my life, but it was fun. The speed yeah. is the best film I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know why. I think that's you that. did give it a ten. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. That's that is it is now canon. That there is the go. rating of this there movie. Is, as we get to our full ratings of every movie ever made, we hope you enjoy this episode. Thanks for taking uh, time to be here with us today. Tune in next Wednesday. We have a deep dive into space balls. Oh yeah! Finally man. hitting the Mel Brooks train. People have been yelling some at us more Rick Moranis from day one. Man, can't yeah. go John wrong. John Candy and Rick Moranis. Dude. Oh my god! Are you both our me? saviors of Are this podcast? Are you kidding me? And we're going to follow that up with our first directly picked executive producer movie, Basketball. Oh, yeah. Going to be a fun one. Oh, it's a fun one. Yeah. yeah. Haven't seen that in a long oh, time. Neither have I. <laughs> and if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. Uh, we did a mini bite, American Gladiators. How about you Dude, check that out? That was actually kind of a fun one. Yes. We, went, we dove deep into the American Gladiators. We <laughs> talked about the games. We talked about the, the gladiators themselves. <laughs> it was a fun one. That's another home from school sick watch that you have to talk about. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, you got to listen to that one. It's so much fun. <laughs> America Wolverine. It's American Gladiators. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms at Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now. Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to ConfusedBreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at ConfusedBreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye.